were out doing a trash pickup. Uh, Jeremy Evans, who is also one of the founders slash volunteers of the Public Land Stewards, will be joining us. Uh, we also have our mascot in the back, Rodney. Say hi, Rodney. And we are off <laughs> on a cleaning adventure. Good morning, everybody. So today, on Grace Pretends to be a Videographer, um, <laughs> we are heading out to China Hat Road, which is a road in Bend. Um, and out this road is usually a place where you have a lot of OHV areas. You have a lot of places where people are out recreating, whether that's riding horses, going trail running, um, taking dogs, camping, motorcycle riding, um, overlanding, that type of gig. And China Hot kind of goes out into the desert east of Bend in Oregon. And it's really pretty. It's actually uh, one of my favorite areas. It's usually where I spend the most amount of time other than the Badlands Desert that's also out here. Um, but yeah, I am heading out there today because I am working on a documentary with public land stewards trying to help clean up and save our public lands here in Oregon, uh, as well as in the Western US. And one of the people I am interviewing today is actually a gentleman who is displaced. He has lived out of China Hat, I believe for quite some time, we're gonna find out. But I'm interviewing him for the documentary today and talking with him about his role with public land stewards, um, helping to keep our public lands clean, how he got involved with PLS, um, and also his story. So given that insight, obviously, yes, this is very cool work. I love what I get to do. However, this is one of those days where I'm a little precautious because I'm going out to do this alone. Um, I am heading out to an area that there are a lot of people who are displaced live at. I am traveling with a lot of very expensive camera gear and again I'm a female I'm alone I have expensive equipment so even though I have met Chris a few times he's the gentleman I'm interviewing and he seems like a wonderful man that as far as I can tell doesn't really have any any issues or impending issues I need to be worried about um, I also am the first person to say that like in these situations you need to take care of yourself so I'm actually armed today um, it is in my glove box, armed with what? We don't really need to talk about, but um, I'm prepared in case something happens. And I think everything's gonna go great. I think I'm gonna have a great interview, um, but sometimes you just never know. So taking, taking every measure I need to, to uh, protect myself. Um, but yeah, I'm actually really excited. One of the reasons I was adamant about doing this interview with Chris was because while we are getting the perspective of people right now that work with public land stewards, um, that are volunteers that really do want to keep our public lands clean to recreate um, and also to keep the Western United States beautiful. The perspective that I especially want to get from somebody who lives on public land as a displaced person is just to show that just because you are living on public land and you've had misfortune in your life, misfortunes in your life does not mean you are not a human being. You have a lot of people that get angry about these cleanups saying that we're just perpetuating the problem by wanting to keep our public lands clean, but that's not the case. You do have a lot of people that live in places like what we have out China Hat with some of these camps who have just had so many blows from life, they don't really have many other options and they are literally doing the best they can. Chris is one of those people. So I really want to shed some light onto the fact that sometimes life just doesn't allow us to make lemonade and you have got to take those lemons and just can survive for a while. So Chris seems like a wonderful person. I'm really excited to sit down with him. I want to share his story because I want to show everyone if I can that just because you are a homeless person or a displaced person doesn't mean you don't matter um, and a lot of the people that are out China hat that are living out there do help us with trash you have a handful of people that will abandon camps and 
kind of be degenerates and whatever else, but that's not everybody. That's actually kind of the minority at this point. So anyway, we are heading out China Hats. I have got a great interview today and I'm really excited to, to kind of do this on my own and have this experience. So Chris lives back, um, there's an abandoned camp down to the left. It actually looks like somebody came in and gutted it out. Um, Kevin and I were down there a few days ago picking up trash and um, guy over here to the right abandoned his trailer, I think quite some time ago, but he had apparently been a bit of a problem. So. I don't know. It's always interesting. I think um, everybody's got a different perspective when you're out here trying to survive, you know. So, anyway. Wow, there's a lot of trash down there. I'm going to have to talk to the guys and see if we can do another cleanup next week after the holiday. So, one of the things that happens sometimes in these situations is... You kind of get out to these camps and if you want to talk to somebody you just got to kind of hang around um i'm gonna hang here for a couple of minutes see if chris is here if not though um i'll just try and come back another time um may try and pop out here on thanksgiving just to see if they want snacks or anything um but yeah it looks to me like nobody's here right now so you know, we always just kind of try and be respectful. Like if nobody comes out of their camp, I don't want to go in looking for them. And they live in this RV up and over here. Um, and I think have for some time. And Andrew, who lives with Chris, has had um, chronic illness for a long time and I think sleeps a lot. So I don't want to wake anybody up and be an <laughs> Um, so yeah, I'm going to wait for a couple minutes, have a little bit more coffee and, um, and hopefully see if not, not going to waste the trip out here. I'm going to get a little drone footage down off China hat and around Bessie Butte and then I'll head home. But yeah, um, we'll see how this goes. All right. Well, unfortunately no interview today. Um, I'm going to get out of here hopefully um i can connect with chris at another time this is just kind of how things roll sometimes um yeah i mean they could be out running an errand in a different vehicle they could be at another camp they could be honestly asleep um it's cold um you just don't know so anyway i am going to head out. I'm going to head down to Bessie Butte, which is just down the road a little ways, and try to get some drone footage while I'm out here and um, yeah, just kind of make the most of taking the trip out, other than purely enjoying getting my truck off-road, which is uh, other than taking a motorcycle off-road, one of my favorite things to do. <laughs> anyway, back to the road we go. To give a little insight here too so this car has been abandoned here for a little while um i feel yeah it's obviously gotten tagged but uh yeah it's the type of thing where getting a vehicle off of public land is actually a huge challenge because it obviously requires law enforcement participation so um again a place where there's a lot of red tape but uh you know if we work together law enforcement, BLM, forest service, etc. It makes all of this a hell of a lot easier. Right, so just got to Bessie Butte. Going to throw the drone up, get some drone footage. Um, I actually really love this hike. You take the dogs out here all the time. It's just, uh, it's a nice little butte. You have a great view from the top. Um, you can see kind of off in the distance there. I believe those are two of the sister peaks. And yeah, it's just absolutely stunning. Um, and yeah, just one of the other really, really wonderful things about our public lands and having access to a place like China Hat Road is 
the essentially infinite amount of things you can do out here, of land you can explore, and also just recreate on and enjoy overall. But yeah, let's pop that drone up and uh, have a little fun. This is Marvin. And I think we're ready. That is So I'm here today with my friend, Kevin. Kevin is one of the founders of Public Land Stewards, uh, also a volunteer, which we tried to stress that everybody's a volunteer with the organization, right Kevin? We are all volunteers. We are all volunteers. So what are we going to do today? We are doing our semi-weekly trash run uh, in one of the acute areas um, to help reduce our winter buildup of trash in the region from the responsible inhabitants uh, living in the forest who are making a proactive work to bag and organize their trash so that we kind of become a service to help them. It helps us in the long term because trash bags sitting when there's no services professionally, locally, at any level are available. Um, it eventually those bags get opened by every animal and critter and get blown everywhere and it becomes a huge huge cleanup mess. Yes, huge problem. And so, yes, we're out doing a trash pickup. Uh, Jeremy Evans, who is also one of the founders slash volunteers of the Public Land Stewards will be joining us. Uh, we also have our mascot in the back, Rodney. Say hi, Rodney. And we are off <laughs> on a cleaning adventure. Hey, thank you. Dog treats. Like quick stop at Back Porch Coffee. Okay, see what about there? Best coffee in Bend. We love it. We usually always get coffee before we go out and pick up trash because you need to be caffeinated for that. I'll crush it. It's fine. One of the hazards out here. Needles. Have to be very careful. These are all thankfully kept. Otherwise though, it's a lot of this. Right, Jeremy? That kind of looks like a... Uh... Look like a mannequin? Oh, those, oh, those mannequin legs. Yeah, it That's does look like a mannequin. Like, <laughs> oh, good leg. All right. Interesting. Try to fill this bad boy up today. So these pine needles are actually from town. They're not from out here. So somebody is dumping, which we run into a lot out here, but that people don't realize. Somebody is coming from town and dumping their own yard debris and waste out here. And now we found a bucket. Yay! That was, uh, I should be proud of that one. <laughs> So this is what we do. Come pick up trash. Usually the trash is left for us and this just happens to be a pile. It's not in great condition. It's probably been out here for a little while. Animals have gotten into it a little bit. Weather's gotten to it a little bit. And it can get gross. Yeah. But I figure we could just scoop and start pretty good. A lot easier. Uh, I do have buckets, FYI. Oh, that might be... I'll choose that first. We'll do both. Right out. Good. Yeah. Turn it back. Straight up. We'll grab that pile real quick. Okay. Might as well. All right. So we are at. Not landfill. Where are we, Kevin? We're at Not, Land Not Landfill, aka Deschutes County Solid Waste. Yes. Mostly solid. 
<laughs> mostly. We like to think it's mostly solid. And we dump here because most people dump in the in a building, and most of this stuff is not suitable for people to be around. It's also not safe for the bald eagle population that lives here. Yeah. So they like to cover it up as soon as we dump it. Yep. And yes, you heard him right. There is a bald eagle population nearby, I believe. How many nests are there? 17 mating pairs of bald eagles and they're monitored by wildlife biologists with the Forest Service. Yeah. So uh, they have to take care yeah. to uh, look after the trash and make sure the bald eagles aren't eating it. Well, as much as possible. Yeah, we don't, we don't want bald eagles eating trash. But we did get a ton of trash today. Look at this. Right, and that's why these awesome guys up here are helping to cover this as best they can and as quickly as they can. All right, now we're gonna get out of this winter weather. It is cold gorgeous. and raining. It's gorgeous. So it's about 24, 2,500 pounds of garbage we picked up today. 2420. 2420. 2420. <sighs> There's just some days. That's all I'm saying. In the previous life, I used fancy cubes. Not anymore. <laughs>